What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Torino Career Mode. This is episode number 70 and we start today's episode off here with a game in the Champions League quarterfinal first leg away in France as we take on Paris Saint-Germain. Yes, as you can see the quarterfinal draw here, I did discuss it in the last episode. We've been drawn against PSG, the side I managed uh, for about a full calendar year uh, in my Arsenal slash West Brom slash surprisingly PSG save uh, earlier on in the year. And you know, coming into this tie, as you can see with the team, I had to make some changes due to fitness reasons we just come on the back of that 1-1 draw against Roma that was a massive massive game at the top of the table in this area now we take on PSG in a massive game so again there had to be some changes but the first chance would fall to us in the seventh minute as Danilo gets on the ball fakes just around Lucas Digne and finds Ferenzi down the right hand side Ferenzi has the pace on the left back keeps on going ends up drilling it across to the center picks out Zardes and Zardes makes it PSG nil Torino won just eight and a half minutes in and I don't know how many times I said this over the course of this series but Zardes, he will never, ever, 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 ever grow a rating. But he'll always score goals. This guy will always score goals, no matter how many times I put him in the team. He has got such an amazing goal-to-game ratio. If I was so bored, I would go back through all my footage and find out how many goals to games he scored and what his actual ratio would be since he came in at the start of the second season. But yeah, the guy is absolutely incredible, man. He's such a great squad player, and he makes a PSG nil, Torino 1. And in the 18th minute, Sirigu dribbles out of play here. We win a throw-in, and Sirigu's getting back to his goal. Aguero finds Florenzi, and Salia didn't get the elevation on the shot. And it's cleared away in the centre. Had I got more elevation on the shot there, we could have possibly made it PSG nil Torino 2 with uh, Sirigu out of his goal. But eventually it comes to Danilo anyway down the right-hand side. Takes it around Lucas Digne. He was having an absolute nightmare trying to cope with the threat down the right wing. We crossed the ball in. Zardes wins the header and he's just a whisker away from finding the bottom corner and making it PSG nil Torino uh, 2. So, uh, so still 1-0 in this game. But in the 34th minute, yet another good chance for Torino. PSG just didn't get started in this game. And again, it was Zardes causing the, uh, the damage. He goes down left-hand side, keeps on going, tries to drill in the shot to the near post, but Sirigu makes the save and turns it behind for a corner, so still PSG nil, Torino 1, all the chances coming to Torino in the first half, but 5 minutes before the, uh, so the half-time break here, a good chance for PSG, Zlatan Ibrahimovic stands over his free kick here, He's uh, joined by a teammate who runs over the ball. Ibra goes for goal from just outside the area with the drilled free kick, but Bernie makes a good save and then also denies the follow-up header and turns it behind for a corner. So good double stop there by our experienced goalkeeper and it's still PSG nil, Torino 1. And two minutes after the restart, another good chance here for PSG. Thiago Motta gets on the ball and finds Johan Kabai. Kabai turns Masaccio, picks out Pastore, but he drags his shot wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. So still 1-0 as PSG went in search of the equalising goal. And in 58 minutes, Verratti finds Ibrahim here he crosses the ball into the centre and picks out Lucas and wouldn't you just know it Lucas who literally just came off the bench scores against us with his first touch but of course that's not the only thing which is very frustrating to see because Lucas is joining us next season he's coming in on a free contract and I don't know if I want him anymore now he's scored against us but either way Lucas scores with his first touch pretty poor marking in the centre and poor from me all round really defensively he should not be allow allowing a goal from that there when it was a simple throw in but uh, still PSG 1 Torino 1 Lucas who's joining us next season and scores against us and equalises for the home side. And in the 65th minute, it could have been 2-1. Zlatan's header goes just wide the post and behind for a goal kick. So in the first half, most of the chances fell to us. In the second half, most of the chances fell to PSG. And as Kabai finds Verratti here, a good chance for the Italian who strikes the ball over the bar and he goes behind for a goal kick. And it was still PSG 1, Torino 1. And it was how the game would finish as well. A score draw here away in France. And we'll definitely take that as well because the first half, yes, we had quite a few good chances. But in the second half, it was all PSG and I just could not defend at all and I think we got away with it really so we'll take a point from that game it's a score draw which means we have an away goal as well meaning PSG will have to score at the Stadio Olimpico de Torino so I'll definitely take that result yes we had a couple of chances to score a second away goal in the first half but I'll take that result due to how much pressure we came under in the second half and the fact my defending wasn't very good uh, still following out we had a use commentary report as we now entered April and you can see a squad report as well so you can see how the players are currently doing right now in this Torino team uh, a few players still yet to grow ratings which is unbelievably frustrating. I mean, you look at De Vrij, and I know De Vrij's been like a, a sort of a rotation centre-back since January, since Masaccio came in, but De Vrij this season has been incredible. He's been a big reason as to why we shored up our leaky defence and haven't let in as many goals as we did in the previous two seasons, but he's still yet to grow a rating. Very, very frustrating. Not even a single attribute change either, but a lot of the players are developing quite nicely. Shalinolu's now an 85. Uh, you can see Aguero, of course, the main player in the team right now, a 90 overall. He is decreasing in 
in aggression, but I think I can handle that as he's a 90 overall right now. And uh, you see Zard is there, like I discussed a minute ago. He'll never grow a rating, but he'll always score goals for us, which is very nice. And Kamisa is still yet to grow a rating as well since coming in and being promoted last season to the first team. Uh, still, look at the league table. We have nine games to go. We are eight points clear of Roma, also nine points clear of Juventus, who you can't rule out as well. With our better goal difference too, and the fact our head-to-head uh, -head record is equal with Roma, and we still have the second game to play against Juventus this season, you'd certainly think we are the favourites for the uh, Serie A title again, but you certainly can't rule out both of those teams. They are very, very strong indeed, and we know that the uh, league is far from over just yet. In the Coppa Italia, we of course have a final against Genoa at the end of the season, as you can see the Champions League round uh, quarterfinals as well. That's how it looks after one leg's worth of play. And we take on Inter here for the second and final game of today's episode away at the San Siro. Inter currently sitting in sixth place. You can see by the league table, they're 17 points behind us right now. Of course, not going to catch up uh, for the uh, for the title, but certainly not ruling them out for finishing in the top three, uh, well, the, the third place even, uh, and, se and second place as well. That's still definitely possible. We take them on here at the San Siro. Definitely expecting of grabbing ourselves another win. Of course, our last league game was a draw against Roma, so it's been two games without a win uh, since our last victory against Bologna. But we do take one into here, and the first chance would fall to the home side. Zerdin Shakiri shot was well saved by Bernie and eventually cleared away. And another good chance for the home side here in the 24th minute as the marker gets on the ball. Down the right-hand side, takes it round Bernassi, plays it inside towards Kovacic, the Croatian. He finds Freddy Guarin. Guarin finds Shakiri inside towards Medel, and a Chilean strike goes wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. So still into nil, Torino nil. And in the 33rd minute, a good chance for us to grab a goal on the break. And Mobley gets played through down the left-hand side here. Takes it round Renokia, beats him, plays across the ball. Uh, sorry, plays the ball across the face of goal. Picks out Poloski, and Alberto Poloski makes it into nil, Torino one. So captain for the day and grabbing in the opening goal of the game as well. Lovely assist by Immobile. Just love the way he pinged that ball across the face of the goal of elevation, but not too much of it. So it was more like a drilled uh, drill cross a couple of yards off the ground. And a great finish by Poloski. First time volley, smacking it past Bardi and into the back of the net to make it into nil, Torino one. So perfect start to this game. Poloski giving us the opening goal just 33 minutes in and we're already in front in this game. And in the 45th minute, a good chance for Inter to equalise. They go down the right-hand side. The marker gets on the ball, takes it around Alexandro, holds the ball up here. Uh, Alexandro commits, but DeMarco plays it inside towards Freddy Guarin. Guarin finds Zerdin Shakiri inside towards Kovacic. What a back heel that was, but Guarin can't hit the target and his shot goes wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. And that was the last kick of the half, so in the second half, just past the hour mark, a good chance for us to extend the lead and make it 2-0. Hong Chol gets on the ball and the Korean finds Benassi. Benassi holds the ball up here against Hernanes and the Brazilian puts him under pressure before he finds Lorenzo Mota. Inside towards Gabby Udini. Lovely turn, but what a save by Bardi. Superb stop by the goalkeeper, and he turns it behind for a corner. So still 1-0 to Torino, but in the 79th minute, a great chance on the break to make it 2-0. Alberto Poloski scored our first goal. He's running at Ranocchia. He can't defend. Poloski gets round him and shoots, but Bardi makes the save, and eventually Lazaro's uh, follow-up cross comes short. is saved by Bardi, and eventually cleared away. So still into nil Torino 1, but they didn't get the danger clear fully. It comes to Camisa down the left-hand side. Another good chance here as he whips in across to the centre. Poloski wins the header, but Bardi makes the save and eventually the danger is clear and that was how the game would finish as well into nil Torino 1 so yet another win notched up for Torino we've been very very solid this season another clean sheet as well Bernie has kept so many of those this season and another good win for us too Inter did have more possession yes we had six shots five on target compared to their two and zero so I think we deserved the win it honestly wasn't the best of games really I struggled to get some footage for that one other than a goal and a couple of significant chances but either way we got the win that's the most important thing and another three points in the Serie A is always the most important thing. Uh, still following that, as you can see, the last thing you'll see in today's episode is me offering quite a few contracts to some players. Uh, even though none of them are expiring at the end of the year, I've had some players been asking for new uh, wage increases as well. Uh, one of those is Baselli, who's currently on the transfer list right now. The board put him on there as I didn't give him a contract in time. So we offer him an extension and wait and see what he says. Also, our captain, Maximovic, has been angling for a new contract. He scored a crucial goal against, Ru uh, against Roma, so I wouldn't mind giving him a new deal, even though I am contemplating looking to... Um strengthen the CB position again next year even though I've done that every single year since the beginning also one for Victor Fazio who's uh, doing pretty well out on loan right now this is his second full season out on loan and he's developing quite nicely now 71 overall and the third and uh, sorry fourth and final player after a contract to is Lorenzo Motta a key member of our first team despite being only 17 years old and only growing one rating he has been a big reason as to why we've been shoring up the defence this season and as you can see I'm very glad he has accepted his contract as you'll see though Baselli does decline here so we go and offer him a new one and we 
we'll wait and see what he says. He wants to move on, but I'm not too sure that's going to happen. We'll offer him a better deal and we'll wait and see what he says because I'm pretty sure even though he's a bench player, he'll still want to stay if we give him a bigger pay increase. But that does end the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Torino Career Mode, then please do leave a like and I'll see you for the next episode of Torino Career Mode very soon.